Are you ready for some more FUD busting? Yeah! It's winter in the Northern Hemisphere, and if you're either far enough north in latitude or high enough in altitude, there's a possibility that you'll get some of that sweet white stuff come down from the sky, covering everything in a pretty white blanket that makes you think of holidays gone by, of a simpler time of horse-drawn carriages and Sir Patrick as Ebenezer Scrooge, finally feeling the Christmas spirit and surprising Rob Cratchit with a turkey as big as a young lad. Make it so, John Luke. <clears throat> right, sorry. Where was I? All oh, right. Snow. Great for taking days off school when you're eight, but not so good when you're trying to get to work. And if you happen to live near Washington, D.C., I'm sure that you'll know about the massive snowstorm that hit the US Capitol a week or so ago. If you are a political wonk, you will probably also know that Senator Tim Kaine from Virginia was among the thousands of people stranded on I-95 as the sheer volume of snow that fell in just a few hours caused everything to grind to a halt. He, and many others, found themselves stranded for more than a day with no food, water, or indeed warmth, other than what their car could provide. And if you're an EV owner, I am sure that you've had some well-meaning friend or family member send you that meme. You know, the one that asks in the interests of all that is holy and good, what would have happened if all of those stranded cars on I-95 would have been electric? Surely everyone would have died, the meme, or the person sending the meme, asks in a hyper-concerned manner. Usually, of course, before telling you or anyone else who will listen that electric cars are going to kill us all and it's only about making rich tech bros in the Bay richer and keeping those blood-sucking Democrats in power. <laughs> That kind of post, the type that has made Mark Zuckerberg the billionaire he is today, is the bread and butter of his company and is favoured by those who lack any kind of scientific literacy or indeed any desire to double check things. And if you are a long time viewer of this channel, you'll know that there is one thing I hate more than anything else in the world. And no, it is not Elon Musk before you say, despite anything you might have heard. I'm talking about willful ignorance, the I don't know and I don't care I don't know mantra. And while I'm as unlikely to get willfully ignorant people caring as I am to get Sir Patrick reading me Shakespeare, I thought the best way to deal with ignorance and stupidity is with some, some bare facts. Now, I could go through the energy required to heat a volume of air equivalent to the average interior volume of an average car from, say, minus 10 degrees Celsius, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, to a more toasty 22 and a half degrees Celsius, or about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 36 watt hours of energy if you're interested, assuming you're at sea level. But my rough calculation there ignores heat losses to the outside thanks to the large amount of glass in your car. So while it might be accurate in a lab with a closed container of air that has no thermal losses, it's not accurate in the real world. Instead then, let's assume that your car is already warm because you're actually driving it when you hit trouble. And let's go with what we know from our team's collective experience of driving electric vehicles. Different electric vehicles have different heating systems. Some use resistive heating, which uses electrical resistance to heat the air in the cabin. It is efficient in so much as all of the energy you put into a resistive heater gets transferred to heat, but it has to create the heat energy from electrical energy. The second type of heating, a heat pump, does things differently. They don't actually generate heat energy, only move it from outside the car to inside the car, like an air conditioning system in reverse. And if you want to know how those work, check out this video, link below, by Alec from Technology Connections, in which he explains things far better than I ever could. If your electric car has an energy consumption screen and you turn on the heater on a cold day, you'll see the instantaneous energy consumed by the heating system spike dramatically. In moderately cold weather, it might peak at four or five kilowatts in cars with resistive heating. And in really cold weather, think minus 20 Celsius or lower, it might go even higher. 
but as soon as your car's interior begins to reach a more comfortable temperature, the energy draw from the heating system will begin to drop. That's because it takes less energy to keep something at a constant temperature than it does to change the temperature. And assuming your car's interior is already at a comfortable temperature, your heating system will generally consume about one kilowatt hour of energy or maybe even less in order to keep the cabin comfortable. If we assume that most modern EVs have a battery capacity of between 40 and 100 kilowatt hours, this means that your car could run for several days before you have any concerns about running out of power. Even if your battery was, say, half empty and you had a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, you'd be good for a day or more of heating. Now, there is a caveat. The colder it gets, the more energy your car will need to pull from the battery to keep the cabin warm. But what about gasoline cars? Well, idling most internal combustion engine cars on the market today uses around about a half gallon, 2.2 litres of fuel per hour. If we assume that there's an average fuel tank size of 15 US gallons, which is 56 litres, then you'd be looking at 30 hours of warmth from a completely full tank, which is about the same amount of time that your average EV could keep you warm on just half a charge. So the TLDR is assuming you have an average EV with a full battery and an average internal combustion engine car with a full fuel tank, the gas car will run out of fuel before the EV drains itself, unless it is so cold outside that the in-car electric heater has to run ridiculously hard in the EV. But some EVs, like the Kia e Nero, owned by Kate Walton Elliott and her wife, have the ability to only heat the driver's portion of the cabin. This means that if you're on your own in heavy snow and you find yourself stranded, you could keep the area around you warm without wasting heat, heating the rest of the whole vehicle. But wait, because the EV might just have a trick up its sleeve. Heated seats and heated steering wheels. Heated seats and steering wheels not only use far less energy than an air heating system, but they warm you directly through conduction rather than through convection or radiation. And again, this means they're heating you, not the rest of the car. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Most modern cars have heated seats and steering wheels, but here's the secret trick of the EV with them. In order for those systems to work in an internal combustion engine vehicle, you'd need to keep the car idling to avoid running down the 12 volt accessory battery that provides the power those accessories need to operate. In an EV, you can keep your car on and the power flowing to the heated seats and accessory without running the heating or wasting large amounts of energy. Finally, I wanna talk about how full your car is. Gasoline cars aren't usually filled up every night, so the possibility of being stuck in an ice car with a half tank or less of fuel is far more likely than the possibility of being stuck in an EV with a half charge or less. Because for most people, you just charge overnight to full, ready for the next day, especially if the weather is gonna be bad. So all in all, if I'm gonna be stuck in a snowdrift, let's make it an EV. Maybe someone should redo that meme out of concern for all of those ice car drivers, eh? That's it for this video. Keep the notification bell tapped to keep up to date with our latest videos because we will be back with more soon. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, for behind the scenes and longer takes. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE team, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Bordor, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jane Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fakerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennersley, and Ian. If you're feeling left out, you can join Patreon at the link below, or you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Or you can send me something with Patrick Stewart on it. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, and as always, 
keep evolving.